This video is part of our tutorial series for the SIG300. I'm Jazz, an AI avatar, and I will guide you through this tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how to integrate the SIG300 IO Link Master into a Beckhoff TwinCat3 PLC environment as an EtherCAT device. In the first step, I created an empty project and established the connection to the TwinCat runtime environment. In this example, a locally installed TwinCat runtime is used as a soft PLC solution. In order to integrate the SIG300 into the EtherCAT network, the EtherCAT device description file, ESI, must be copied to a specific location in the TwinCAT installation directory. The path for a standard installation is C TwinCAT 3.1, config IO EtherCAT. When using a soft PLC, an EtherCAT master must be added first to the IO tree. Select devices in the IO tree. And click on add new item. Select EtherCAT master and click OK. Then select the network adapter which connects the SIG300 with your computer. The device description data must be synchronized once so that TwinCAT can use the ESI. The folder must be synchronized once as well so that TwinCAT can use the ESI in the project. To do so, click on TwinCAT, EtherCAT Devices, Reload Device Descriptions. Now the SIG300 can be added using the device scan. Select the EtherCAT Master, Device 1, and click on TwinCAT, Scan. Under certain circumstances, the configuration must be activated first in order to start the TwinCAT runtime. In that case, click TwinCAT, Activate Configuration. The SIG300 is now displayed in the I.O. tree and is ready to be configured. The SIG300 is a modular device. A slot is available for each device port, S1 to S8 which can be configured according to your application. You can choose between modules for connecting standard I.O. devices and I.O. link devices. When selecting an I.O. link module, please ensure that the process data of the connected device fits into the respective module. In this example, we connect a SICK WTM10 I.O. link photoelectric sensor to master port S1. As specified in the operating instructions, the sensor supplies four bytes of process data input. If no module with the correct amount of bytes of process data input is offered, we select the next larger module. Unused ports can be filled with a slot empty module. The behavior of the master ports during the startup phase can be configured in the Startup tab. Among other things, the behavior of the additional pin 2 can be defined here. In this example, we configure pin 2 as a digital input. Depending on the sensor configuration, a digital signal is now transmitted from the WTM10 to the master port, which can be used in the application program. Via the New button, it is possible to add further service data objects (SDOs) to customize the startup behavior of the SIG300. In order to be able to exchange process data of an EtherCAT device with an application program, we create a standard PLC project with a main program and create a new variable, which should hold the incoming process data of our WTM10 sensor. Program variables that are to be linked with hardware-related data are created with the declaration AT% I asterisk for inputs or AT% Q asterisk for outputs. We create an array with four bytes regarding the process data size of the WTM10 IO link device. Now we build the PLC project. Click on Build, Build Solution. Confirm the sync master warning with OK. Now we link the newly created variable with the process data object, PDO, of our sensor connected to port S1. To do this, we select the PDO and click right mouse button. Change link. Select the program variable and link it completely with the PDO. Now activate the configuration and transfer and start the PLC program.
The raw data of the WTM10 sensor can be monitored in the online view of the program. Now you have learned how to integrate the SIG300 IO-Link Master into a Beckhoff TwinCat3 PLC environment. In the next tutorial, we will look at the interpretation of the process data and how it can be used in the application program. Thanks for watching.